big fan of TVT, guys. Don't worry. Don't uh, make sure to stick around. I won't say don't stick around, but yes, you should <laughs> stick around. If you're not a big fan of TVT, sucks for you. <laughs> We've got a couple more of them coming. No. <laughs> Actually, that's not the case. We have two more amazing best of fives coming up. It's going to be Dima versus Gonzi. Of course, Dimaga, MTW Dimaga, against Slayer's Gonzi. And we're also going to have Sen versus Zinio. Sen, uh, the Taiwanese who always performs well in the NHL. Two seasons on a row, he got that bronze medal ban. And I think he's uh, he has the skill uh, at least to get more. Also won the NHL Sunday Showdown this season. I guess Fnatic yeah. thought uh, with a 4-1 score or 4-2. Sin is a paradox. He's kind of like Rhett. He comes yeah. uh, he comes over, he plays one game of StarCraft, and then he sleeps all day, yeah. and then he just gets up, plays his match, wins convincingly, and then goes back to bed. Yes. He's kind of like a bear. That's it why makes sense. The Gamma Bear is Sin. Like he, he, he literally he hibernates until he, uh, unless he's playing StarCraft, and then he's back to sleep. That is super true, but yes, uh, two more big best of fives coming up, and at the end of the day, guys, we can finally tell you what a real playoff bracket looks like. We know a couple of things right now. We know for sure that Red is going to play against the, the Muslim. Muslim. Yes, we, we know for sure that because of that game, Beastie QT is going to play against Stefano. We know for sure that TT1 is going to play against Hero. Uh, yes. Because who? If Thorazine won. No, Thorazine didn't win, so yes. Oh. No, he's playing against Puzzle. Okay. So it's going to be a Root TT1 against Slayer's Puzzle. You sure? Yes, okay. I'm sure. I'll take your word for it. Because Strelok was the. L no, wait, that's not right. Who was the lowest seed? Yeah, it was Thorazine, and he didn't advance, and then TT1 was seed number 15, so he's going but to play Alicia against. But Alicia beat Hero. Alicia no, is the. T it's oh, puzzle. okay, 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 okay. It's not Alicia, man. It's I thought I thought this. I thought Hero was a higher seed, but he's not. No. Because he lost puzzle. something. Six series, by the way, guys. If you love PvP, make sure to check out the tiebreaker games between uh, Puzzle and Hero. Yeah, really fun games. There was not all that much on stake for either, guys. And uh, we said, like, guys, just play best of one to see who gets seat number one, seat number two. They said, no, we want to play best of three. We're like, well, okay. First game, they start off with a proxy. And we're like, well, why do they want to play best of three then? Uh, but it turned out into a really, really great series. So if you have some spare time, if you enjoy PvP, make sure to check out Puzzle vs. Hero. You can, of course, find those games on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash nastarleague. Yes, I'm sir. Remember correctly. Holt this time opening double gas one base. So he's going to be the guy doing crazy stuff. And Alive is doing single gas one base. So similar but not identical builds. I guess Alive is going to go command center after factory. And that is exactly what we're going to see. Yes, it is exactly what we're going to see. So maybe Alive going Command Center before Starport and then going up to Banshees? Or maybe even Hellion Drop? I don't know. I have a question, though. Yeah, there's the Starport going down. We were talking about how Sin hibernates. So when a bear hibernates all winter, does it just sleep straight through the winter or does it, like, wake up sometimes to stretch? <laughs> I have no idea. I think it just sleeps, man. Does it, like, it really sleeps for, like, 180 days straight? And it doesn't wake up at all to like roll over or? I think maybe he wakes up and he has a calendar. He's like, hmm, 50 more so days to go. Like wake up and eat a fish and then <laughs> go back to sleep? <laughs> I have no idea, man. I would be really curious about that. And uh, like if he's in such a deep sleep, could you like walk into his lair and like smack him on the butt and then run out and be <laughs> safe? <laughs> Why would you do that? Let it be asleep, man. Let it be asleep, please. <laughs> <laughs> Command Center is more than halfway done for our life. Paul is researching Cloak, man. Our producer just confirmed that he does not wake up for three to seven months. But don't slap him on the butt, because <laughs> if disturbed, he can wake up and he will not be happy. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, imagine if you wake up, like, I get mad if someone wakes me up after three hours, because that's like when I'm in my deepest sleep, you know. Imagine <laughs> if you wake up a bear who's asleep for 95 days. Like, <laughs> he's going to be real mad. <laughs> Whoa, slaps you, like, just swats you across the cave. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, man, the first bench is making their way into our lives. The base, our life does have a Viking out already. Cloak is almost ready. Our life is going to follow it up with the, Vi with the Raven. Yeah, great opening so from the As soon as that Raven is out, our life is going to be more than fine. But there should be a small window, Ben, like a window of around 20 seconds. Well, if he flies that far away, I don't think he can ever hit mm. that window. There will be no damage done by this well, Banshee Cav. By the time it comes back right now, even if he activates Cloak, is he really going to fly back? Oh, look at Alive. He's paying such close attention, right. keeping his Viking oh. on track. Nice uh, and ninja we'll move continue right there. to hunt this banshee. Second banshee is on the way though, over here in the bottom side of the map. Alive once more, not having a, or well, actually that command is just ready. He's just upgrading it to an orbital, so it's no surprise that it's not ready yet. The raven is out. Uh, how many marines do we have? Like eight, mm, nine. nine. Yeah, Should be more than enough. Minimal damage is going to be dealt by the uh, by the banshees, and uh, Polt is he's behind, man. 
He's okay. Gonna, he's gonna try to expand behind it. Second bench, he makes his way into the base, picks up one SUV, and I guess uh, this bench, he might be able to pick up a reactor. I mean, it's not eight Marines or eight SUVs, but it's something. He uh, oh. up both. Very mm. sloppy report. He has to be careful. He might actually end up losing this second bench as well because it's so low, man. Any scan will kill it with the Viking patrolling on the north side of this bench. Here. Raven just coming in as well. Kill as many SCVs as yeah. possible. It's going to be like six or seven, but seven, Bolt, I believe. Uh, gives away two banshees for seven SCVs and a reactor, which is probably not the best trade. He has one more banshee. Three banshees is quite a lot. That's yeah. a small investment. Yeah, and I mean, if we look at his units tab, we can see that he's just got a handful of Marines out. Uh, 13 Marines and a Siege uh, Tank. Tom Cruise is going to say hello to this Banshee as well. Man, Tom Cruise, he's on the roll today. Like any other day in life. What are some good Tom Cruise quotes? What's something funny that Tom Cruise has said? I have no idea. <laughs> Scientology. There's something funny that Tom Cruise said. I actually haven't seen that many movies, man. I'm not a big movie guy. This Banshee picks off uh, a Marine and a Helene in the middle of the map. Paul is two workers down. Uh, units lost. Resource tab shows that... Uh, life lost a little bit more, but he's also going to have a slightly better economy. This orbital was just a little bit quicker. Uh, good thing for Paul is he's going to have cloak throughout the entire game. And even though he might have not did the amount of damage that he would love to do right now, there's always a moment later in that game man, when cloak is going to be useful when that raven will eventually fall. Uh, so it's not all bad news for Paul. Uh, you could even say the opposite. It's quite okay. Yeah. Because uh, he's already mining from two bases, right? Uh, both these guys have been really careful about uh, floating over orbitals or even building it in their natural. Have you noticed that? Like their natural expense. I feel that the European Terrans in general are a lot more, gr uh, a lot more greedy. They always just build the orbitals in the main. And it's funny how yeah. it kind of evened out, evens out in the end. Like yeah. Polt's early harass was virtually <laughs> useless. He just, I mean, he killed those SCVs, but. I mean, it's it's hard to say that it was worth losing those two uh, banshees, but... Nice moving shot over here by Alive. He's actually going to be able to... Oh, there's no energy. No, he already activated Cloak. And he had, like, Cloak for two seconds, and then it deactivated. Um, so that was kind of a useless banshee. That was a nice pick up for Alive. Has to feel root. That's so bizarre. How is Polt in such a good position now? Because he was mining from this base a little bit quicker, and he's dropping a lot of mules as well. And I think Alive saved up a little bit of energy. Well, he's able to drop two mules over here. So that's going to uh, skyrocket his economy at least a little bit. But Pulse the guy with the supply lead, man. He's got 88 supply to 83. He's got more army supply, more worker supply. Pulse just ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, albeit not that much. It's Upgrades are also pretty even. It's all going to come down to positioning in fights like this when, it, when it's so extremely close. Uh, Alive doesn't have combat shield yet. And you know what? Started Alive's yet. army's not as good, Kev. He's got no. Vikings that are going to be pretty useless. Steam is... Kill uh, man, uh... The upgrades for Paul, that's what really is going to work for him. Combat Shield is going to be ready in 5 seconds. Stim Pack is 10 seconds ahead of Alive. And I really think if he fights with Stim and Combat Shield, he might be able to Stim in and clean this army up from Alive. It is just incredible to me that uh, that Polt came out of all of this opening with a yeah. lead, man. And yeah. also plus one is way ahead. How is that possible? I don't know. Maybe Alive was just too safe. Oh, poor Marine. <laughs> oh, he knows that he's on siege right now. He's going to try to do something about it. No, he's not. Just dancing, man. Everybody's dancing. The vi uh, I mean, uh, the good thing for Paul, uh, for Alive, is that he has air vision, so he's always Paul's always going to be forced to use a couple of additional scans. Mm, we're going to see a little bit of bench, or I'm sorry, Raven harass over here in the back of the main of Paul. Uh, maybe a little auto turret action. Auto turret is very, Paul. very annoying. They do good damage. They're hard to kill. Certainly, with Marines, they're very hard to kill. I mean, that's going to force these SCVs to evacuate. Might even kill a couple of supply depots. Look oh. how fast the Marines die. Really nice arrest by Paul. Man, these are these these uh, auto turrets are so oh good. Alive, They're killing so many Marines. Oh my gosh! Uh, more SCVs falling, and uh, look at all the worker kills, man. Seven workers killed there. <laughs> That's uh, what like four Banshees managed to do as well. It's a beautiful little arrest right there by Alive. Actually, it's actually going to even things up a little bit. Alive is even ten supply up right now. And this forces Paul to move out. Port still does have combat shield, Ben. Alive does not. Port has plus one. Alive does not uh, does not have oh. plus one. Well, yes, Port, uh, I mean, Alive has the Viking numbers, and that's going to help out quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, it makes it very difficult to attack. But Port's going to be very smart about this. He's just going to elevator over into the main base. He's going to get positioned with these siege tanks, and the Vikings are going to be just in time wow, to we scale have two away the as well for Alive, and those tanks are crucial. I don't think Port wants to do uh, 
continue with this plan, which allows Alive to, uh, to buy the time that he needs to get those crucial upgrades as well, plus the one and combat shield. That's going to make his life a little bit easier. But you uh, see an additional orbital yeah. is already ready for Paul, and for, uh, for Alive, there is no such thing. Yeah, uh, Paul just continuing to stay a little bit ahead in terms of bases and economy. Uh, Alive does throw down at his own third command center, but it's going to be a while yet before that one is ready. And I think Paul's got enough map control that he could just float on out. Oh, tries to get some Vikings. I think kills one of them. But uh, Alive, well positioned on that high ground, manages to save the rest. It's really surprising that Paul never decided to go into this little Viking war. All that Alive had is three or four Vikings, and in that way he can get uh, back air superiority, but uh, it seems like he doesn't even want to put the money into that. He's not very concerned with it, Kev, no. but uh, Alive somehow has, has really taken a big supply lead. It's uh, 94 army supply to 106 actual supply. Worker tab shows us a six worker lead for, uh, for Alive. And as, as soon as I get done making that point, Pulse supply skyrockets. I guess he just stopped macroing for a second. <laughs> Alive up 20 supply. That command center is almost ready. It's starting to look good for Alive, man. I'm starting to dig the position that he's in. He was behind in upgrades a little bit, and still the first armor upgrade for Pulse is going to be a little bit quicker. But that's really about, uh, about it. And I can't really see that. They're going to fight before anything else is ready. Paul could start with pl uh, plus two. He has Ooh. the money. Paul's going to take a little bit of a skirmish here, but uh, numbers and, and army composition means that he can't really continue to hold this spot. No, as soon as Alive on Sieges, Paul comes in once again. Big stem going down from Alive. And Paul does get some pretty good tank positioning. The problem still are these Vikings are granting so much vision and so much control for... Uh, for the Fnatic Terran player. Yeah, Paul really wants that Selenag Watchtower, but he's just not going to be able to get it. Uh, he has to keep his uh, Metafax out of range of those Vikings as well. Alive is moving out with a really big squad right now on the right side. This could uh, lead up into something perfect. He might be able to deal a ton of damage, maybe even pick off this orbital. That would be so huge. Wow, Paul has no Paul idea. Paul is completely unaware. This could be an absolutely game-ending move. These Marines coming all he the way around. Orbital. They could catch these units out of position. Stim goes down and alive with a much better position and much better numbers. Will the tanks be able to turn the tide? Nope. I do not think so. And Medivacs with Stim Marines uh, doing some heavy damage there too, Paul. Finally. Uh, uh, Polk comes back with some reinforcements, but Alive just expertly splits up these two groups of Marines, and he's going to go get some SCV kills before this army or this little hit squad gets cleaned up. And Polk pulled a lot of Marines from this squad over here, and I was kind of waiting for the moment if Alive would try to crush that army when most of those Marines were out of position, but he's not going to do that. In the end, man, Polk didn't manage to do that all that badly. He is nine workers behind right now, but he has triple orbital. Alive does not have it. Uh, the good thing for Alive is that he had pretty much... <laughs> Ooh, Viking yeah. is getting lost, yeah. but, uh, or a Viking getting lost, but Alive is taking well. some good map position here. He's going to push all the way up towards the thord ba third base of Polt, who just dropped all of his mules here and uh, has no choice but to evacuate this expansion. At the same time, Polt's been a little bit aggressive at the third base of Alive, forcing that command center to lift, and if it falls, oh, yes, it does go down. Great pick off there by Polt. Uh, Polt also losing his own command center, so both these guys relegated to two bases now. Same thing happened on the other side. Paul is the one who's going to have quicker 2-2 two -two band, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to try to force the issue uh, with 2-2 two -two when he's ready. Both players have almost exact amount the same amount of workers, so that means the army supplies are going to be super close. This is a close game in every possible way. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. It's just a positional war, the chess game that is TVT. Um, alive and uh. Polt both remaking those command centers oh, at the Polt same time. Polt, of units. bad control there, losing that a handful hurts. of units. That's going to swing things. Because neither player is particularly rich in this phase of the game. Uh, Especially no. after losing their thirds. Yeah. Polt's got a little bit of money banked up. Alive, because he was on one base for so much longer, has actually mined out his main already. So Polt is mining a little bit more. But, um, wow, this is actually such a crazy game right now. These guys are both going to mine out. Alive is going to give up this container. Paul knows about it. He's going to try to stim, maybe pick up a thing. No, it's not going to happen. Alive is going to siege up near the Selenaga Watchtower. But what's important is that Paul has taken enough of a position to retake his third base. And, uh, I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what he needs, mm -hmm. man. This game's kind of going to come down to who can secure a third and, and maintain a third. Paul is losing a lot of units in these small, Man, not even engagements. Alive leaving his tanks completely exposed. No Vikings are there. So like what tower is there? That's true. And Paul can't really bring in his Viking. He doesn't know what's coming. Paul's going to try to make a run, a small run by with a little hit squad. Uh, but Alive is aware of it this time. He had control of this Zelnaga Watch Tower. He knows that it's coming. Both players trying to be active around the map. This is 
This is as much of a chess game as you're gonna yeah, get. Yeah, it. it's really cool, man. Even if you, if you just watch the mini map to kind of see yeah. the movement, uh, Pulse gonna stem and run in and Not do a, a little time. bit of damage to this command center, but there's literally zero chance of him killing it. Uh, might be able to trade a couple of marines. Oh, maybe Kills mules. Two, two mules, three yeah. mules. Actually, that was pretty pretty good. Um, mules are free, but they represent a lot of income. Yeah, certainly right now, because neither player was uh, mining a whole lot in the previous two, three minutes of this game. So picking off three mules for six, seven marines is most likely worth it. Three trees on the way as well for Paul. And Alive didn't even start it yet, and this could make a really big difference too. Both these guys are going to build planetaries at these new expansions. Yeah, that in surprises hoaxes. me a little bit. Uh, they just know the importance and they know that they have to hold it alive. The guy that's got the big worker, I'm sorry, the big uh, supply lead, 177 supply to 160. Oh, Ooh, look at all these siege tank. tanks. Picks up a second tank. Not bad for seven, eight marines. Not at all. After, uh, after all, I mean, the, the tank numbers are what determine the uh, the final. Um, would determine the, the strength of that final uh, engagement, right? The tank is the backbone of these of these Terran armies. And Alive has the better tank count right now. He's going to stim and run in with a higher tank count. But, oh, man, Pulse got so many Marines. Yeah, Pulse has a ridiculous amount of Marines. 59, and after that little engagement, Alive still has 45 Marines. I'm not sure where they are. Uh, a couple of Marines are going to drop. Uh, wow, beautiful uh, drop right there by Alive, picking off that one siege tank over here, which was... And the planetary taking heavy damage. T Polt is just in range, forcing oh, a lot Alive of Marines over here. to commit a lot of units to repairing it. I think it. Alive is just going to siege in and try to break it with... Uh, I mean, stim in and try to break it with everything. It would be a really difficult fight with tanks and Marines in position. But Paul doesn't have everything over here, and Alive does have everything. He did manage, he did manage to siege a couple of tanks in range, so he was able to pick off one tank. The other tank is still in range of the planetary, but one is at least a much smaller problem than two. Yeah. Still yeah. just chipping away. This is why I would never be a good TVG player, but I would not have to play. Yeah, it's, it's such, a, uh, such a waiting game at times. You know, both these guys at about 170 supply. Um, Alive will be forced to pull off mining and repair here shortly. Polt right now sending it down another squad of Marines on the top half of the map, and Alive's going to respond to this with all these Marines out of position. If Polt sees these Marines moving, uh, he might stem in and try to pick off the CC. Well, There's more Marines for Alive, though, so Alive is going to be able to take his fight, and he should be able to clear up this army despite those three siege tanks. Nice pick up by Polt. He managed to save at least two tanks, but that engagement definitely went in favor of Alive. Oh, uh, but Polt has to react to this, Kev. He should... Well, I there guess there's so, so many, many tanks, tanks there. Like, it's kind of hard to react to that. Right. So many siege tanks. How many tanks does Alive have? 16 tanks to five, wow. which feels just astronomical. And this ho whole group of units up at the top half of the map could very well load up in medevacs and try to drop in the main or in the natural of Polt. And if that were to happen, that could be very, very difficult to clean up. Yes, it's good. He's going to send a couple of Marines, and uh, I guess he's going to try it, Ben. He's going to pick up everything. And Polt doesn't see it, Polt man. There's no sensor tower. Around. There's no turrets. And here we go. Gonna see it right now, a big purple dot on his minimap, and then, well, there's Right of the medevacs as everything unloads. Ebays are gonna fall, armory's gonna fall, depots are gonna fall, tanks are gonna fall. Pulse coming back with units as fast as he possibly can. Might have enough, and he's really taking minimal losses here. I like what Paul is doing over here. He didn't really lose all that much. Lost one or two siege tanks, lost an engineering bay, but he has three, three upgrades. So I think he's quite fine with that. The armory, maybe he would have loved to get plus two on his tanks in the long run. Uh, but he picked up a lot of Marines and a lot of medevacs. I don't think that was the best engagement for, or the best drop for a life. Then again, I can't blame him for uh, trying something. Yeah, I, uh, I liked the, uh, the maneuver there. I think if he'd done it a little bit sooner, it would have been more effective before Paul could kind of make more units. Pulled after that uh, engagement is suddenly up 40 supply. Not and Life is getting 3 3 now as well, and he is the one starting his plus 2 mech, so that's an upgrade that Paul is most likely not gonna get after losing that armory. And other than that, these two guys are just still moving around the map, trying to get in the best posi uh, uh, position as possible. Of course, they realize the importance of this game and this series. The winner of this best of five advances to the playoffs, will be top 16. That guarantees money, it guarantees a chance. <laughs> you, where you, I mean, if you're in the top 16, you just have to win one more round for that ticket to Toronto where you get to play on the main stage in front of the live audience for $30,000. It's not just any audience, Ben. It's going to be a Canadian audience. Yodelay hee hoo. They don't do that in Canada, well, do they? I, I think <laughs> they do that in Austria. <laughs> <laughs> a good audience, eh? <laughs> yeah. Small skirmish once more, but this uh, southern Selnaga <laughs> watchtower, alive taking control of it. 
Alive still having that 18 siege tank, but Paul has 99 marines, Ben. Oh. He has 90. Oh, he had 98. 99. <laughs> no. 99, 99 marines, but actually. Oh, what are you doing, Paul? Big stem. He's just going to go for it. And actually, I think he's going to have enough, and he's going to rip through the siege tanks of Alive and uh, immediately takes a big supply lead. Uh, the response from Alive is to head up to the top half of the map where he's going to try to put wow. some pressure onto this fourth expansion of Polt. Polt is badly out of position. I don't think he has any chance to save in this base. He's just going to try and repair and kill off as many Marines Ooh. as he possibly can. So many SCVs in a bad spot. Polt frantically trying to move up the map and get in position to respond wow. to this, but great pick off thereby alive uh, means that he's now a base ahead yeah supplies are pretty much even then but Paul only has 27 SCVs that's nothing in the 29 minute game so Paul is really gonna have to make something happen he does have one more command center floating off I'm surprised he never decided to use the orbit over his main even the refineries are mined out so he might as well just try to land it somewhere well he could find he could send it back up to 12 o'clock yeah I would like to see him do that if he uh, if he puts it together that that's a possibility I mean, I like this big attack, but uh, he took a lot of damage on the other side. It's just, <laughs> whenever something goes good for one player, the other player does the exact same thing, and we're kind of back in the same scenario. Yeah, it's a real brawl, man. It's like a boxing match. Every time one guy gets hit, the other guy hits back. And uh, Paul is up 21 Marines right now, Ben. The rest of the counts, uh, the rest of the number counts are pretty much even. Paul Whoa, is a little bit ahead. that is a sea of siege tanks, an ocean of metal. I actually thought you were going to say a sea of Marines, because... All those blue marines together, they kind of make a sea. Well, I was talking about a lives army. Like, you can actually jump on those marines and they will throw you around, you know, like a party. <laughs> <laughs> Mosh pit. <laughs> Couple of marines uh, died to that planetary fortress over here. Both players are going to be maxed out in the near future, which means that Paul is the one who's going to have the bigger Ooh, army. Run, Bolt! Oh, so many marines. Tanks forced to disengage there, and that means that Paul will be able to take back a little bit of map control. And yeah. man, Kevin, this is like, like turn-based RTS. It's like, okay, you go here, I'll go there. You go here, I'll go there. And these guys are really just trying to uh, get the proper position. Looks like Polt's going to gear up for a big fight up at the top of the map. Manages to get the tank sieged up, and we'll get a couple really good volleys off on the army of Alive. And I think that's going to be a good engagement for Polt. Alive forced to back off at the same time. More action at the bottom half of the map where Polt wins. Well, did he win or he takes yeah. another fight? And the supplies are pretty even. But he's still up to the army supply, and that's the biggest thing. Alive has slightly better upgrades. He has plus two on the tanks. Paul's actually going to rally his tanks into the tanks oh of Alive. Oh, no. It's a terrible loss. They're losing at least one siege tank. Scans and gets a couple shots off on the tanks of Alive. Ooh, imagine if Alive had vision of this all along. Then he could have taken out all tanks, but he still takes out uh, four out of five, so it's not all bad. It could have been a little Polk bit better. could drop on those tanks. Doesn't seem to realize it just yet. Uh, both these guys just really trying to hold on to what expansions they have. This Alive. is this is some incredibly high level TVT. Alive is mining more than Paul, but Paul still is the player with the bigger army, and he has the uh, freshest base. And these guys are just spending their money so well. How often do you see Terran players with the huge, huge mushrooms of gas that they just can't spend? Yeah, uh, certainly th in the not places the case. Like this. Yeah, not the case here where there's just tanks everywhere, Marines everywhere, medevacs everywhere. And it's very interesting that there have been no Vikings. There has been no additional tech. Nothing like battle cruisers coming out. Yeah, I'm surprised about that as well. But then again, it's been such an action-packed game where pl both players maybe have not fallen all the time, but whenever they did fight, they also always lost a big uh, clump of, his of their army. So I guess they never never really felt safe enough uh, to take up to battle cruisers. Hmm. Oh man, really cool stuff here as uh, Pult has now worked his way into range of this orbital at the middle of the map. Alive, working his way around the backside. He's going to try to put some pressure on this planetary. Oh, Pult, there's not this many units here for Pult. He's got tanks and Alive actually disengaging for that. Wow, big tank shots going off on this planetary and a lot of SCVs are going to fall to it. Uh, SCVs that Pult really can't afford to replace. He's got only 23 right now. Well, this maxed out army is just going to get bigger and bigger, man. That is very true. Uh, planetary taking heavy, heavy damage, but finally I think it's going to sort of stabilize. Single Viking comes out to kill the spotting medevacs, but still tanks are in range. That TVT. Uh, one more volley and the planetary falls, and it does go down. And again, uh, Polt finds himself in a situation where he's a base down against Polt his opponent. Polt was putting uh, quite some pressure on his orbital as well. That's why I just tried to take a look what's happening. But it's just not enough. Just two tanks shooting at his orbital from quite far away. Alive has a lot of tanks backing up this orbital. This is really the moment, Polt, when you want to use this orbital from your main, perhaps. Oh, uh, he, he took the one from his natural, which is uh, not yeah. a whole lot different. Which is a step. 
And uh, that will allow him to mine once again. It's the top half of the map. You, these guys have literally just drawn a line through the center of the map, just taking turns, controlling different bridges. And uh, uh, this is like a Brood War game, man. These guys are, are really battling for map control. It's not about single fights that end games. It's about controlling maps and controlling expansions. Controlling space as well. Y yep. More than anything. Paul has, uh, I'd say, sort of the better positioning right now, even though our life has fire on his Cell Watch, so he doesn't have control, neither player really has it. Paul does have the uh, top Cell Watch, so he could potentially still expand over here. Uh, I really think it's just a matter of time right now before either player is going to make the switch and at least try to get a better cruiser or two out. I just don't know how they can afford it, Kev. What I would really like oh, to see is 100. perhaps a little bit of dropping going on. Like, Polt right now could safely drop in the main base of Alive, and I don't know that Alive could really respond to it. 99 Marines. He had 100 Marines. Small Marine battle going on over here. Fighting for honor and conduct. Yeah, and that was like uh, American Revolution there. They just line up and shoot. Yeah. Paul is uh, alive. He's going to do some of the drop, what you said, some of the dropping, Ben. What you said, he's going to fly right into the guy in the missile turret. That guy had an easy day so far, but Ben, <laughs> he's going to have to get to work. Fire Z missiles! No! Uh, can't reach. No! He's sleeping oh. on the job, Kev. Somebody tell him to stop smoking. Uh, tanks and Marines going to push up through the center of the map at the same time, and uh, Paul's going to have a difficult time responding to this. And this means more medevacs are going to load up. There's going to be a big drop going over into the main base of Polt, who has taken the initiatives. Medevac, I'm sorry, missile turret guy just died. He was just obliterated. Single siege tank and a handful of Marines trying to do something about this heavy drop action that's happening here inside the main base of Polt. Supply is still pretty even. Both guys basically maxed out. Polt is going to pull back these forces, or at least quite a few of them, from the right side of the map. So maybe that opens a window for a life to do something. This orbital is going to lift out. This orbital will fall. Polt never really using this orbital after the main was mined out anymore. But Painful loss, and Alive's getting a really good trade yeah. here. Not only in the fact that he's killing he's getting richer. infrastructure, but look at all the depots he took out. And oh, Pulse broke. Pulse is going to try to intercept all of these medevacs. Could be huge. Oh, and now Alive is stranded in he's no stuck. man's land. This is the a worst Viking. time. Paul, do you have a Viking? Paul has a Viking. Where is the Viking, man? Oh, no, Paul's actually got an army, which is even more important. Chasing, I'm sorry, Alive has an army, which oh. chases the Marines of Pulse away. And he's just going to drop in the main base once more. That's remarkable. Uh, Alive suddenly has two and a half thousand banked up. He's going to build two more command centers, and one orbiter is on the way, so he's going to get a real ridiculous Freaking army. missile turret guy, man. He really he really dropped the ball on this one. Oh. Look at Polt all oh, bottlenecked up, attacking into a much better spread of Marines. Wow, Polt lost so wow, many Marines Alive. over there. So unnecessary. Getting such a great trade here, and Polt supply plummeting Alive up at 190 still. Polt still hasn't managed to rebuild his supply depots, Kev, and this game is slipping away from him with every misstep. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I don't really see what Paul can do. Alive is just perfect positioned all around the map. Alive is doing the right things. I do feel that Paul could have done the same. Paul was the player with the superior marine numbers, and he just didn't do anything with it. Never tried to find in the window, never tried to open anywhere. Whoa. Now we see both players dancing around a little bit with pretty seasonable armies. Yeah, indeed we do. Marines in the middle of the map going to stim and try to force an engagement on these siege tanks. Polt retreating from his engagement in the middle of the map because of all the tanks of Alive. He's going to try to sandwich this tank force. If Alive loses these tanks, maybe there's a chance that Polt wow. can stick around. That went so much better for Polt than it went for Alive. Alive was quite far ahead before this fight. Now suddenly we're completely even again pretty much in army supply. Polt even slightly ahead. Polt is mining from two bases, but he doesn't have a lot of orbitals anymore, does he? Uh, you're exactly right. He's just got the one. Two. Yeah, one. He has one orbital. Single orbital, two planet. Or he's got a command center over here in the top right. Might be worth it to turn that one into an orbital. 107 supply to 150. That's the real problem. Alive has had all this yeah. money banked up, and he's able to turn that into army. Whereas Alive Pulse can make so poor. Trades. I mean, the last trade was not good for him. He lost a lot of siege tanks. Uh, the Marines were not perfect position, uh, but at the end of the day, he did kill a lot of Marines uh, from Paul. Uh, Paul just doesn't have the money to replace him, and Alive can do this uh, all over again because he has the entire bottom side of the map. And uh, he is going to make a big push here through this center bridge. Uh, probably won't be able to advance into the tanks of Pulp, but again, makes a good trade. 130 supply for Alive, uh, only 85 for Pult, who's falling further and further behind, but who is mining. He's going to build a planetary up here in the top right, so there yeah. is you know, uh, there is a future for Pult, although we don't know how much of one. I really don't think that's the right call. If he wants to make any comeback, he has to get orbitals. He lost pretty much all of his orbitals, and he's so low on, uh, on SCVs. 
Normally, would you ever try to continue building planetary fortresses when you're on 23 SUVs? No. He's just not going to be able to ever get a seasonable army out once Yeah, more. I agree with you. Uh, beyond that, he's also losing valuable infrastructure. Uh, again, he just can't afford to, afford to replace well, this might stuff. be able to pick up that medevac. No, he's not. He's going to be able to pick up a few marines, maybe one medevac. Yeah. Ooh, 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 wow, man. Wow, that medevac really took like a bullet for his body, man. He's like, yeah, take me, take me. Yeah, Don't this, you this medevac's an MVP, man. Did yeah. a barrel roll, deflected half the bullets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never knew Medivac could do such tricks. Never knew Tom, Tom, <laughs> Tom Cruise liked to drive a Medivac. <laughs> Never knew Tom Cruise could be so feminine. <laughs> <laughs> he saw he just gave me a wink. He's like, yeah, bro, I did that. Oh, man. Uh, alive still, mining in the middle of the map, mining across the bottom half of the map. These guys are... Uh, are really playing, again, very scrappy, but... Uh, oh, Marine's gonna try and take out this planetary. That's a... Bold move. <laughs> it is a bold move and one that's doomed to, to fail as Alive responding with a lot of Marines. This could very well be the final engagement of the game. GG comes out from pole to Alive, takes it, goes ahead 2-1 in the series and puts Polt on the brink of elimination. It's funny how our life often seems sort of effortless in the regular season, like he didn't care that much. Obviously he tried to win, but I didn't really feel like he prepared for his games, like he put a lot of effort into it. Now it's wild cards, now it's playoffs, and now we see 45 minute macro games out of our life and super tactical positional game. As well, if you enjoy TVT, these kind of games are awesome. If you're not a big fan, then you're perhaps kind of wondering. It's just one of those things you have to appreciate the beauty in it. I enjoyed it from time to time. I think it was some excellent high level play in TVT, so. I look forward to game four, man. Love casting chess matches, Kev. Game number four coming up is going to be on Daybreak. Stick around. More StarCraft 2 when we get back.